My nasty auntie locked me up. She wouldn't let me see mommy, and she told me to stay here. She also said that if I didn't listen, then these people would hurt me. But I wasn't scared, because I knew that my dad would come to save me. Why did your aunt lock you up? Bryce asked. When you left the hospital, Grandpa had my horrible auntie take me away and lock me up so that I couldn't see Mommy. Auntie said that as long as they had me locked up, Mommy would do what Grandpa said. After Bryce heard this, he was a bit shocked. He also couldn't help but think about Natalie, who had barged into his room earlier. He looked down at Liam, who was in his arms. Bryce's heart softened, and a sigh escaped his lips as he held the child tightly and walked out of the room with big strides. Bryce carried the child into his room and put him down. Then he took out his cell phone and handed it to him. Call your mother and ask her to come pick you up. Dad, you're not taking mommy and me home? Little guy, I'm not your dad, so you shouldn't call me that. But you are. Sorry, you are not my son, so stop calling me daddy. With that, he got up to leave. Liam quickly grabbed his shirt. Daddy! Listen carefully. I'm really not your father. Bryce was speechless. Seeing how pitifully Liam was crying, he started to feel bad. Don't cry. Stay with me tonight. Your mom will come to pick you up tomorrow. Really? Liam immediately stopped crying and looked at him in surprise. It's getting late. Let's go to sleep. I haven't taken a bath yet. Daddy, can you give me a bath, please? What? Dad has never been around my whole life. Other kids' dads give them a bath. I envy them. Bryce strode forward, scooped him up in his long arms, and held him. Fine, I'll give you a bath if you want me to. Liam immediately wiped away his disappointment and put on a happy expression. Dad, you're so nice. After taking a bath, Liam had no clothes to change into, so he put on Bryce's t-shirt. Liam laid down, but he couldn't fall asleep. What's wrong? Dad, will you sleep with me? Bryce clenched his fist and took a deep breath. Then he came down and laid down beside him. Sleep. Liam beamed. He snuggled close to him and closed his eyes. Natalie did not sleep at all the entire night. So when she came to the hotel the next day, there were dark circles under her eyes. Today, she vowed that no matter what, she would sneak into that room and get him. When the hotel manager saw how early she had arrived, he had a whole new level of respect for her. The manager took her upstairs, and before he left, he reminded her, if you don't have anything to do in the corner room, don't go in there. If you upset that guest, we'll be ruined. Natalie nodded quickly, and she was about to go to the next room when the elevator dinged. Someone was coming. Natalie dodged around the corner, peeked out, and saw Cheryl walking toward the door of the room she had been about to enter. While she was thinking of a plan, two burly men walked out of the room. Where's the child? How has he disappeared? The two bodyguards shivered as they recalled the cold eyes of the man from last night, so they made up a story. The brat smashed everything in the room, and while we were tidying up, he took advantage of the chaos to escape. Useless. If you can't even take care of a child, what's the point of having you? After hearing that Liam had been lost, Natalie moved without thinking. What? You said that Liam has disappeared? I'm going to call the police. She took out her cell phone and started to dial the police. A trace of panic flashed across Cheryl's face when she saw Natalie dialing 911. At her command, the two bodyguards held Natalie down, snatched her phone, and ended the call. Cheryl, give me my phone back. Sis, don't worry. How far can a child go? He'll be back soon, don't you think? Cheryl, I'm going to find Liam. If you keep doing this, you will be punished. Cheryl suddenly felt a great sense of satisfaction. She walked slowly over to her with a twisted look of glee in her eyes. Although the child is lost, why are you still here? Isn't it Bryce's responsibility to find out his whereabouts? If he really is your son's father and you are his child's mother, he would have rescued your Liam way earlier. Cheryl waved her hand to signal her subordinates to take Natalie away. Let me go! It wouldn't be good for you if Bryce finds this out! 
Natalie knew she had no business with Bryce. Telling the truth to Cheryl would only risk her son's life. Finally, struggling and whining frantically, Natalie was taken away. Bryce didn't sleep well. Dad, why hasn't Mom called me back? He pouted and looked at Bryce with an aggrieved expression. Bryce was also a bit confused. He immediately called for his men. Go out and find where the woman is. Not long after, they returned with pictures on their phone. We found out from a surveillance camera that Miss Davidson was taken away by these people. This is Miss Davidson's sister. Bryce squinted his eyes dangerously. When Liam saw the picture, he cried. Bryce looked helplessly at him. Even the bodyguards, who were standing to one side, were surprised when they saw their boss soften. Daddy, Mommy's been taken away by those bad guys. They will definitely bully her. Go and save Mommy, please. Liam was tired from crying. He raised his head and looked at the man in front of him, begging him with his eyes. Hi, I am Natalie. Want to know my story? Then download the Pocket FM app and listen to the exciting episodes of The Return Now. 